Good morning. Thank you, and I'm uh, kind of uh, the conclusive uh, panelist here, but I look forward to a heated debate after this on whether the critics are right. I'm delighted to be here at NASCOM 2000, and over the last decade, uh, just a bit of my own background, uh, I think I've, I'm truly a global citizen as far as IT services company goes. I started my career in Canada, worked for extensively in North America for 12 years, moved to India in 94 to set up HP's uh, outsourcing offshoring operations and ran that for 10 years before joining Oracle and now into Perot. So um, over the last decade, um, I, I see number f how this forum, the NASACOM forum itself is matured and the kind of topics that we are deliberating here is indicative of where the markets are progressing. The world is getting transformed faster than ever before as a global economy and a greater part of the population is getting engaged in making that transformation happen regardless of where they are. And yet, you know, globalization has been there for several hundreds of years. However, will the offshoring trend reverse itself? Are the critiques right? I think is a valuable question that we need to deliberate as we uh, look into the future of where this IT services industry is going to head. And all of the various comments made today uh, was uh, extremely relevant uh, to, to the problem at hand. I believe that regardless of which continent, geography, country, city, in fact, at an individual level, um, the trend of globalization is irreversible. It's starting to affect the lives of people, whether they live in Dali in China or in Coimbatore, India. As long as you get on the map as a provider on the radar uh, of, of the global economy as a provider of services, you've got to start worrying about your uh, brand, you've got to start worrying about your uh, government support, your talent pool, uh, your business economic models, your infrastructure. And the world is definitely becoming a much uh, smaller place uh, from where we operate from within. Um, at Perot, I think uh, we have been deliberating this uh, quite significantly. Our leadership team, in fact, meets regularly every month just to spend time on this topic and understand our own position within the market uh, as this trend emerges. And what is really exciting to me, having been in this industry for the last 20 years, is, is the importance the company places on this. And some of the comments that I heard today, even as Bob talked about it, we are a company a $2.5 billion company with 22,000 employees. Uh, the revenue per employee is much higher than many of the tier one India vendors, and we are extremely sensitive of being agile and nimble and not be led by this gold rush for talent acquisition in hundreds of thousands. We worry about our employees, and we want to ensure that the quality of life of our people uh, and the quality of services we are able to provide in terms of uh, ex execution and, and, and professionalism across the world is consistent regardless of where our employees sit. So we've been very careful in about uh, scaling our operations. But what we see as a trend emerge is, is that I think the era of offshoring to India is going through a metamor metamorphosis and what is emerging as a trend is a new breed. And we believe that that new breed will be a mix of all what the multinationals have been able to accomplish in terms of customer acquisition, uh, customer relationships, uh, long-term, large-scale TCV contracts um, versus what the offshore tier one India vendors have been able to deliver in terms of low-cost uh, quality processes, higher value services, global delivery, remote delivery capability, not necessarily global delivery capability, and uh, consistency in terms of quality. And what we're really seeing happen in the new breed is a real combination of all of these capabilities coming together in a global delivery model. Uh, in fact, I think uh, as the emerging markets evolve, we're seeing the trend uh, both in terms of suppliers, as well as customers to get very, very selective in terms of which geographies they, they choose to operate from and what services uh, they provide from the various geographies. Uh, we have chosen to go after Philippines for BPO. We're definitely considering Africa 
particularly South Africa, Kenya, as markets where uh, BPO could be one of the good services that we can offer. It seems, I, you know, ironic that we keep picking countries that where cricket gets played well, is what our, our senior leader for BPO keeps talking about uh, in terms of uh, BPO services. Um, in terms of disaster recovery so services, we're finding that Dubai, uh, with its sustainable workforce, low tax, better infrastructure, and highly skilled labor, could potentially be a great uh, place to set up our disaster recovery for some of our long-term contracts. China definitely is a competitive uh, positioning for some of the services for application development that we do uh, in India as the, as the attrition rates and the cost of service uh, in India continues to grow. But we're also seeing our need to be near shore, close to the customers in Eastern European locations like Romania and Hungary and Ireland, as well as uh, in, in, in Canada or in Mexico or Latin American countries uh, to support uh, North American services. And what, we're, what we are truly building out is this new breed of global delivery models and global delivery services where we can ensure high quality, consistent delivery capability for our customers in a follow the sun model, whether that is IT outsourcing, business process offshoring, or applications and consulting services uh, from these uh, locations. Uh, we're setting up tools and methodologies to be able to deliver that service and, and I think that that is the emergence of a new breed. From a customer perspective, some of the trends that we are no noticing uh, that are emerging is, first of all, there aren't that many billion dollar large scale outsourcing contracts that are coming to play. They are much more discreet and selective and there are more, in fact in 2005, if I recall, there were 293 um, contracts that were uh, out, off, outsourcing contracts that were let out between the 50 to 200 million dollar mark and about 30 percent of those were won by uh, India-based offshore companies. So the trend is becoming more selective in terms of the kind of outsourcing partners, more multiple service providers, a better procurement and uh, sourcing strategies that are evolving just like Samantha talked about and having a definitive change management and transformation plan within the companies themselves in order to be able to provide uh, a, a very successful uh, global delivery model um, across the enterprise.